Okay, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop Elements. I've got version 11, which is the latest one. Um, I'm going to show you how to actually take your home photographed images and make them look a little bit more stylish, a little bit more professional, and then get them ready for your website. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the image that we want to use. Um, so I took a couple of images, uh, took a couple of photos of this ring. I'm going to open both of them so I can have a look. Um, okay, let's have a look at one and the other. Okay, so this first one that I've got here, I've actually um, had a shaky hand when I took this, so this is called motion blur. Um, if you've got one that's this blurred, don't bother using it. Um, even though we have sharpening tools on this um, software, you're not going to be able to sharpen it enough to look good enough if it's that blurred. So don't use it if it's that blurred. If it's that blurred, take another photo. Okay, so this one is looking perfectly fine. Okay, now there's three different um, views that we can use in Photoshop Elements. So there's Quick View, Guided View, and Expert View. Um, the Quick View gives us a few tools over here to be able to change things, and a few tools over in our tool palette over here. The Guided View click on that it gives us a lot more options that we can use uh, not many things in our tool palette and then we have expert view so it gives us a whole load of um, tools in our tool palette and then within these menus up here um, it actually gives a lot of different controls that we can use if you're a beginner um, you can either start with quick or guided I would recommend guided just because it gives us a really good balance of still keeping it really simple um, but giving us complete control over the image. Um, you know, we can pretty much do anything here. So let's go with guided. Alrighty, so the first thing that we do is go over to our touch up section and we're going to adjust the brightness and contrast. So it has auto fix a button here. Um, basically, we don't want to teach you how to do things automatically. We want to show you how to do it yourself. Um, and having complete control of the image. So we're going to do it ourselves using these sliders. So the easy way to figure out what these sliders do is to take one to the maximum and take it down to the bottom and to see what that does. I'll put it back to roughly where it was. Alrighty, and I'm going to use the contrast, slide it up to the top and back down to the bottom. Okay, and put it back where it was. So now I need to determine, you know, how much brightness and contrast do I need to use on this image to make it look a little bit better. Um, Usually, you will always want to add just a little bit of brightness and a little bit of contrast. Okay, so you can see that this area around my image has gotten a lot whiter and cleaner. Um, I actually took this photo on a wooden um, bench on the windowsill, actually. Um, so that's why it's got these lines in it. But, you know, it's making it look a bit cleaner by giving it more contrast and brightness around this area. I can still quite nicely see the ring. Um, and I can still see the shadow. The shadow is fine on an image. It makes it look more real. Even though when you're shooting with um, photography studio lights, you probably usually won't see a shadow. Don't worry if you've got it when you've taken it yourself at home with no lighting other than the sunlight. Um, because it, it's a natural occurring shadow and it's fine. Okay, so I'm happy with the adjustments that I've done here. So I'm going to press done. Okay, the next touch up I'm able to do is correct skin tones. I don't have any people in this image so I don't need to do that. The next tool that it offers me is crop. Okay, so I do want a crop. Um, I would always recommend that you do a square crop of all of your images for your website just because um, if it's a landscape image that you've taken, so it's long ways, um, or if some of them are portrait, you know, that, it all looks a little bit messy on your website. But if they're all perfectly square, um, then everything's going to look nice and neat and beautiful. Um, so it's automatically given me this rectangular cropping box, but I don't want a rectangle. So what I need to do is say, no, no, I don't want to use the recommended. So I'm going to cancel that current operation. And now you can see floating up here is the crop tool as my cursor. So it's kind of like two pairs of scissors coming together if you imagine it like that. Um, so to crop in a perfect square I first need to hold down shift on my keyboard and then I'm going to click and drag across the image. Now it doesn't matter if you haven't got it 
perfectly centered um, because once we let go of our mouse we can actually move our box anywhere we want okay and at this stage we can also um, rotate our image as well so if I go out to the edges here you can see that um, I've got some different arrows and when I get to the curved arrow with two heads on it I can actually move it around like this by clicking and dragging um, and then if I say okay I'm happy with that it's actually going to turn back up to be straight so I've just curved it around a little bit so that when I click OK, that's just a little bit straighter image. OK, um, so I'm going to say perfect, done. Alrighty, so the next thing that we have here is enhance colors. So we'll go into this one. So it gives us the option of hue, saturation and lightness. The only one that I would use in here is saturation. Um, hue actually changes sort of the color spectrum like this but we don't really want to change that in here because if you do have a little bit of, um, like it's a bit too yellow or a bit too blue, there's another um, section where we actually change that. So hue isn't really appropriate in this. The only thing that we want to really adjust here is saturation. Um, sometimes we need a little bit of lightness, but we're going to use saturation. So again, what does the maximum do? What does the minimum do? Alrighty. So all I want to do is just bump this up a little bit so that I can see a bit more of that blue and a little bit more of this some brassy tone coming through. Um, and then, you know, what does my lightness do? Up and down. Okay, so I want to leave that exactly where it was. And exactly where it was will be 1. Get it back to 1. Oh, sorry, 0. So you can see those little numbers that were coming up there. Okay, and I'm going to press done. All right, so the next one that comes up is levels and um, levels it plays with your whites, your midtones and your, your blacks. You don't really need to do this because we've, we've done pretty much everything we need to do in that area using brightness and contrast. Um, we can go into lighten and darken though if we feel that our image is just a little bit too light or a little bit too dark. So we'll go in there um, and we can play with our shadows, highlights and midtones in here. This is a lot easier than the levels one which does basically the same thing. So again, let's go and have a look at what we're doing. So if I've got too much shadow, I can just bring that up just a just a touch so I can see those finer details in here. Okay, the highlights, let's have a look at what it does. Okay, so it's just playing with all of the whites basically is all our highlights. So I don't want to adjust anything there. Our mid-tones, okay, what does it do? It's adjusting all the, sort of the mid-range of things. And I think they're perfectly fine, so I'm going to set that back to zero. Okay? Done with that one, so I'll press done. Alrighty, the next option that it gives us is perfect portrait. Again, that's if you're doing um, an image of a person and we'll go through that in another tutorial. Recompose, we don't really need to use that um, when using our um, when doing our product image. Um, rotate and straighten, we already did that when we cropped our photo, so we really don't need to do that again. Um, scratches and blemishes. We, we really don't need to use that if we're just doing a product shot again. Um, sharpen. We do want to do a bit of a sharpen. Um, so what we're going to do is open that one. What does our maximum do? What does our minimum do? Okay, so how far can we take it before it looks too sharp? Okay, look, too sharp. It's about there I'm going to go. And every photo will be different. So you just need to go up the top, down the bottom. What do you feel comfortable with? Okay. Go to. Alrighty, now there are some other photo effects down here. Um, you don't really need to use any of these um, unless you want to, but do feel free to play with them. They're, they're quite fun. Um, but when we're just trying to make a really simple, basic image that's clean and sophisticated, that's about all we need to do. Okay, so again, what did we do? We went to brighten and contrast, and then we cropped our photo. And then we gave it a little bit more saturation with our enhance. And then we went into lighten and darken and we just adjusted those shadows a little bit. Um, and then we went into sharpen. So those are the main ones, again, that you want to use for only for product images. Okay, so now what we want to do is first we're going to save it for print in case I want to use this in a printed brochure. 
and then we'll go into how to actually save it for web as well. So to save for print, I just want to go save as, and we're just going to say photo edited print. Actually, one thing that um, is good to do is to name the product, so we might call this army ring, and I might say this one is print, just so I know that this is the print version. Okay, always make sure it's on your maximum quality when you're doing it for a print. And you always want to make sure it's on the default here, which is baseline standard. Never choose Progressive 3 because it creates problems later on. Okay, so that has saved a print version for us. Now what we want to do is go and create a web version. Okay, so we go back up to file and we're going to go save for web. Okay, so this is showing us our original image, um, the size of it basically, and this is showing the size of it um, with our current settings. Um, now the main things that you want to play with is go and have a look and see what it says in our preset here. Has it got it set on GIF, JPEG or one of the PNGs? For an image for a website, um, we usually want to use JPEG. Um, GIF is what you use if you're doing an animated image. Uh, PNG is what you would use if it has a transparent background or something. So say if, if this wasn't white, it was transparent, you would use PNG 24. But as we're just doing a simple white background image, use JPEG. Okay, um, the next thing that we want to go into is adjust our pixel size. So this is our pixel size here, you can see it's got PX. Okay, the perfect standard I always say is 600 by 600 pixels. Um, this will give you a relatively low file size, um, but a nice big screen view. Um, okay, so we want to type in 600, and then I want you to actually click on the image. Okay, and that actually brings it down to 600. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is is the size of my web image going to be under 300 kilobytes? So that's K for kilobyte. It usually should always be under 300 kilobytes. If it's not, you need to just go and adjust your quality. Um, so I've brought that down to 78. You can see that brings it down to only 95K. Um, but because at 100% quality, I've got it under 300 kilobytes, I'm happy. So I'm just going to go save. Alrighty. So it has automatically put in these dashes here for me. Um, that's basically because whenever you um, save an image for the web, it needs to have no spaces in there. If I wanted to rename this and call it Army Ring Web, I don't actually need to put the dashes in there. I can still leave the spaces because it will put the dashes in there for me. So if I click Save and then I go to my folder that it's saved in, you can see here, even though I put spaces in, it's put dashes instead. Um, so this is my print version, which I can use in a brochure or something like that, on a postcard. And this is my web version. So they still look basically the same on a screen. Um, but if you were to try and print this web image, it would be quite pixely, quite blurry. Okay, and that's how we use the guided um, viewing of Photoshop elements to make our product images look nice and professional and cropped perfectly for our website.